Hi everyone. Today we will discuss about the calculations in spectroscopy and we will discuss about the estimation of lambda max by using Woodward feature rules. Let us take a diein like this and this is simple diein that is the 13 buta diein. And this 13 buta diein can also exist in another confirmation like this. What is the difference between these two confirmations? These two confirmations differ based on the orientation of the double bonds around the single bond. So here we can observe a sigma bond and this sigma bond or a single bond is present between these two carbons. And in the first structure we can observe that the one of the double bond is below and then the double bond is above. So the double bonds are present opposite sides to this sigma bond. So this confirmation we can call S trans confirmation. Similarly, in the second confirmation, you can see the two double bonds are on the same side of this single bond. So this is the S cis confirmation. So in this way, 13 butadiene can exist as S trans confirmation as well as S cis confirmation. As we know that confirmations can be rapidly interconvertible, we cannot separate uh, these two confirmations in the 13 butadiene. And because the trans confirmation is always more stable in these uh, open dienes, so 13 buta diene mainly exists as S trans confirmation. But we can fix these confirmations if we are going to convert this open chain compound into a cyclic compound. Because cyclic compounds cannot change uh, their confirmations very easily. Now let us take this 13 buta diene S trans confirmation as well as S cis confirmation and let us see how we can incorporate these double bonds into a cyclic structures. In the first structure, if we are going to add the chemical bond like this, we can incorporate the double bond into a cyclic ring system. But still another double bond is there, then we can add further chemical bond so that we can incorporate the second double bond again into the cyclic ring system. So in this way, the two double bonds are now incorporated into the two different cycles in the first structure. So this compound which is obtained from the S trans conformation is called as transoid compound. Similarly, the second one, if we want to incorporate these double bonds into a cyclic structure, we can add the chemical bonds like this and we can incorporate both of these double bonds in a same cycle and since it is coming from the cis conformation, so this is called as cisoid compound. Now the cyclic dienes can exist in the two different conformations as transoid and cisoid. Now this is the first one coming from the S trans conformation and here because the two double bonds are in the two different rings so this type of diene we call heteroannular diene. So hetero means different and annular means rings. So the double bonds are present in the two different rings so it is a heteroannular diene. Similarly second one where the two double bonds are present within the same ring so this is called as homoannular diene. Now heteroannular diene is coming from the S trans conformation so it is a transoid compound and homoannular diene is coming from the cis conformation so it is a cisoid compound. In this way this uh, cyclic dienes can exist as heteroannular as well as homoannular dienes. Now what is the lambda max of this heteroannular diene? The lambda max of this uh, transoid is around 214 plus 20 that is around, around 234 for this structure. Similarly for home annular diene for this structure lambda max is 253 plus 20 that is 273 nanometers. And here this heteroannular diene is having a base value of 214 nanometer. That means without any addition of substance the base value of this transoid diene is 214. Similarly the home annular diene is having a base value of 253 nanometers. So which is having the more base value? The home annular diene is having the more base value and even if we see the lambda max value lambda max value is more for the homoannular diene which is having the 273 here but here in the heteroannular it is only 234. So lambda max value is less in the heteroannular diene and more in the homoannular diene. But here if we see the molar absorptivity the heteroannular diene is having the more molar absorptivity compared with the homoannular diene. That means transoid will have more absorptivity compared with the cisoid but the lambda max will be more for the cisoid compared with the transoid. 
Now today in this video we will discuss about how to calculate the lambda max of a particular homo analog or hetero analog dyne and how to assign the base value, how to assign the increment values and finally we can calculate the lambda max value for a given structure. So for that we will see initially Woodward feature rules. These Woodward feature rules are going to give the few of the base and increment values for few of the structures and we can have the rules for different types of compounds here we are going to discuss about the conjugated dienes so conjugated dienes are acting like the chromophores that means these are the groups which are responsible for the absorption of the uv visible radiation and the substituents on the conjugated diene system are acting like uh, oxochromes that means these groups cannot absorb the uv visible radiation directly but they increase the absorption of the chromophore so they are called as oxochromes now in a structure we can identify a chromophore as well as the oxochromes. Chromophore will be given a base value that means which are responsible for the absorption of the UV visible radiation and oxochromes are given the increment values which are smaller values compared with the base value. Now according to the Woodward visual rules let us see the base value for the two different types of ring systems. So this is the first ring system and this is another ring system. If we identify the chromophore in the first one so this is the one. 2, 3, 4. That means just we have identified it is having a diene. And we have given the numbering to the diene. And here we are not following the IUPAC numbering. We are just randomly giving the numbering so that we can label the diene. So diene is acting like a chromophore. Now which type of diene it is? Whether it is a homo analog or hetero analog. Because the two double bonds are present in the two different rings. So this is a hetero annular diene. Similarly, if you see the second structure, again let us identify the chromophore. This is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now here both of the double bonds are present in the same ring. So this is a homo annular diene. Now this hetero annular diene is having a base value of 240 nanometer. Whereas homo annular diene is having a base value of 253 nanometer. Now let us see the increments. For presence of exocyclic double bond, ring residues or alkyl substitution or substitution with the chlorine bromine for all of these the increment value will be 5. Similarly for an extended conjugation the increment value will be 30 and we can also have the other increments just like for alkoxy group the increment is 6 and for dialkyl amino group it is uh, 60. In this way we can have the increment values which can be added to the base value based on the type of the structure. But here what is the exocyclic double bond? Now let us see the exocyclic double bond. So suppose if we take a structure like this you can observe that it is having the two double bonds and in order to identify the exocyclic double bonds we have to label the rings with uh, alphabetical letters. So this is a ring A and this is a ring B. Now with respect to ring A is there any exocyclic double bond? So exocyclic means which is exo means which is outside and cyclic means ring system. So any double bond which is outside of the ring but which is directly attached to the ring is called as exocyclic double bond. So now with respect to A this double bond is exocyclic double bond which is outside of the ring A but it is directly attached to the ring A. So this is called as exocyclic double bond. Now let us see with respect to ring B. Now with respect to ring B you can observe that there is no double bond outside the ring B. So with respect to ring B we cannot observe any exocyclic double bond. So in this way this structure is having only one exocyclic double bond with respect to ring A. In this way we have to identify the exocyclic double bonds with respect to each ring present in the structure. And here you have to observe that this double bond is not exocyclic to the ring B because which is uh, even outside the ring B but it is not directly attached to the ring B. So what are the double bond which is outside the ring and directly attached to that ring outside it is called as exocyclic. So here this double bond is not an exocyclic double bond. Now with this information let us calculate the lambda max for the given structure and let us see if you have the examples here. But since this video requires more explanation and if you have any doubt at any part of this video please post your doubts in the comment box so that we will clarify your doubts immediately.
calculation of the lambda max by using the Woodward feature rules. So let us take two examples here. So this is a one structure which is having the lambda max 263 nanometer and this is another structure which is having the 283 nanometer. So you can observe that both of the structures are similar with a small change in the arrangement of the double bonds. The position of the double bonds is somewhat different in the two structures. What happened to the lambda max? You can see the first structure is having the 263 but the second structure is having the 283 nanometers. So just by changing the positions of the double bond the lambda max value is going to be shifted to higher values. Now for these two structures let us calculate how we get the lambda max value as 263 as well as 283. So let us start with the first structure. If we take the first structure let us identify the chromophore here. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. We can give the numbering in any direction. So this is the chromophore. Now this is which type of diene? Because the two double bonds are present within the same cyclic ring system. So it is a homoannular diene. Since it is a homoannular diene, what is the base value? The base value will be 253 nanometers. And then we have to identify the ring residues. So here what are the ring residues? So ring residues are the attachment of the rings and when we open these chemical bonds the ring will be open. So here at the first position you can see a ring residue. That means a chemical bond is attached to the first carbon and if we break this carbon the ring will be open. So at the first position we can observe a ring residue. And we should not break the ring in between the chromophore. So in between 1 and 2, 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 we should not break the ring. And then at the 4 again you can see if we break the ring the ring will be open. So to this chromophore the rest of the ring is attached at the two portions. At first portion as well as at the fourth portion. So these are called as ring residues. So here we have two ring residues and for each ring residue the increment is 5. So this is 2 into 5 that will be 10 and there is no extended conjugation. Ex extended conjugation means an extra double bond. So since here only two double bonds are there there is no extra double bond. So extended conjugation is not present and even exocyclic double bonds are also not present. So the total value of the lambda max for this compound will be 253 plus 10. So lambda max will be 263 nanometers. So this is a simple example where the lambda max value is 263 nanometers according to the Woodward feature rules. Now let us take the second structure and again here you can identify the chromophore 1, 2, 3, 4. Now this is the chromophore and here the double bonds are present within the same ring. So again it is a homoannular diene. Since it is a homoannular diene again the base value will be 253 nanometer just like the previous example. Now if we see the ring residues, at the first position we can observe a ring residue and at the second position we can observe another ring residue. Again we should not break the ring between the first and second, second and third, third and fourth. That means within the chromophore we should not break. But we can observe another ring residue at the third position which, which on breaking will open the ring. Similarly at the fourth position and the ring residue. So totally we have four ring residues. So four into five that will be 20. So 20 is the total increment that should be added because of the ring residues. Now let us see the exocyclic double bonds. So in order to see the exocyclic double bonds let us label the two rings. So this is the ring A and is the ring B. Now with respect to ring A is there any exocyclic double bond. So let us check this. So with respect to A, you can see that there is no double bond outside the ring A. So with respect to A, the exocyclic double bonds are 0. Now let us check with respect to ring B. Now with respect to ring B, if you see that the two bonds are outside the ring B and which are directly attached to the ring B. So here this is the one double bond which is outside the ring but directly attached to the ring B. Similarly here another double bond which is again outside and directly attached to the ring B. So these are the exocyclic double bonds with respect to ring B. Now with respect to ring B we have two exocyclic double bonds. So 2 into 5 that is equal to 10. Because for either ring residue or exocyclic double bond for all of these the uh, increment is 5. And now there is no extended conjugation because again here we can observe only two double bonds. So that's it. So if we calculate the lambda max, so the lambda max value will be 253 plus 20 plus 10 that will gives 283 nanometers.
Now let us go with another structure. So here again, we can uh, identify the chromophore 1, 2, 3, 4. So now again, it is a diene, but here the two double bonds are on the two different rings. So it is a heteroannular diene. So the base value of this compound is 240 nanometer. And if we see the ring residues, at the first position, one ring residue, and at the second position, and the ring residue, third position as well as fourth position. So totally we have four ring residues. So four into ring residue, that is four into five, that is equal to 20. And exocyclic double bonds. Now again, let us label the rings, the ring A and ring B. With respect to ring A, we can see that one double bond is there between one and two. So with respect to A, one into five, that is equal to five. Similarly, with respect to B, with respect to B again, we can observe another double bond here, which is outside the ring and directly attached between three and four. So with respect to B, again, one into five, that is equal to five. We can also observe a alkyl substitution. At the first position, we can observe an al alkyl group. So the alkyl substitution at the first position is giving again, again, increment of five. And you can observe that other methyl groups are present at the rest of the structure but which are not directly attached to this chromophore, so they should not be considered. So what are the alkyl groups which are attached to the chromophore are only responsible for the increase in the lambda max, they should be given with the increment values. So that is the total increments for this structure. So if we combine all these, the lambda max value will be 214 plus 20 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. So it will give lambda max value as a 249. Now let us go over the other structure and here we can observe the three cyclic ring systems. And here let us identify the chromophore 1, 2, 3, 4 and we can also extend here 5 and 6. That means the chromophore is extended, it is not a diene, now it is a triene. And here two types of dienes can be observed. If you consider the double bonds 1, 2, 3, 4, it is a homo -anlar. But if you consider 3, 4, 5, 6, it is a hetero -anlar. So which should be considered? Because homo -anlar is having the more lambda max value compared to the hetero -anlar, we have to consider the homo -anlar diene. So this can be considered as a homo -anlar diene. So the base value will be 253 nanometers. Then if we see the ring residues, at first position one ring residue, second position, third position, fourth position and sixth position. We should not break between the four, five, six. So totally it is having the five ring residues, so 5 into ring residues, that is 5 into 5, 25. And now let us see the exocyclic double bonds. If we label the ring, this is the ring A, ring B and ring C. With respect to ring A, you can observe that two exocyclic double bonds are there between 3 and 4 as well as 1 and 2. So two exocyclic double bonds are there with respect to A, so 2 into 5, that is 10. Now with respect to ring B, with respect to ring B, you can see that if we close the ring A, we cannot observe any exocyclic double bond. And if we close the ring C, again, you cannot observe any exocyclic double bond. So with respect to ring B, there is no exocyclic bond, so it is zero. Now with respect to ring C, with respect to ring C, you can see that uh, an exocyclic double bond is there between three and four. So with respect to C, one exocyclic double bond, so one into five, that is equal to five. You can see here, what are the double bond between the three and four is exocyclic to the both ring A as well as ring C. So, so we have to count all these exocyclic double bonds. Then the next one is the extended conjugation because the diene is now converted to triene. So extended conjugation is there. So we have to add an increment of 30 nanometer. If we calculate the lambda max, it is 253 plus 25 plus 10 plus 5 plus 30. If we combine all these, uh, we will get the value at 323 nanometer. So now you can see that the lambda max value is going to be increased above 300 and now it reached to the 323 nanometers. In this way, in a given structure, we have to check all the possibilities, how many types of exocyclic double bonds are there, is there any external conjugation, is there any alkyl substitution and how many ring residues are there. All the possibilities should be checked and we have to add all types of increments and finally, adding all these increment values to the base value, we will get the final lambda max value. Now let us take another structure here, but it is a open chain diene. So this is called acyclic diene. So if we give the numbering to this diene, one, two, three, 
4. So this is the chromophore. So the base value will be 270 nanometer. So for an SI click die in the base value is 270 nanometer. And if we see the alkyl substitutions at the first position one methyl group is there second position ethyl group and fourth position again methyl group is there so three alkyl substitutions are there so three into five that is 15 and here you can observe that whether the alkyl group is a methyl or ethyl water may be the group the increment will be five and there is no extended conjugation because here only two double bonds are there and there is no chance of exocyclic because it's not a cyclic ring system it is a open chain diene so by combining these values, lambda max will be 217 plus 15, that will be 232 nanometers. For this acyclic diene, the lambda max is 232 nanometers. And you can see that this value is very less compared with the annular dienes, whether homoannular or heteroannular dienes. But among these, the homoannular diene will have more lambda max, but the intensity will be less compared with the heteroannular diene. So in this way, we can calculate the lambda max value for a given structure by using the Woodward feature rules. So that's for today. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. Since this topic requires more explanation. And if you have any doubt, please post your doubts in the comment box. And we will be ready to clarify your doubt. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching this video.